my backpack with my Bible. I left it, so. But here, this morning, last week, we've been talking about living, living on the fence. We're trying to say, you know, making a decision to get out of neutral area and get out of, 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 uh, of Egypt and that's the picture of the world and leaving the world and getting over to the place where God will bless and meet the needs of his children. Without following, being faithful to God, we will never experience that kind of bountiful living. This living is much, much better when we follow the Lord wholeheartedly. Uh, I'm going to, this, this morning, I'm going to speak on the, the subject. Um, I'm going to explain five different kinds of faith. So I'm going to probably go fast through four of them, then hit the fifth one for a while. But faith, faith is something that we, we will voluntarily get involved. What does that mean? Well, we... Now, as a Christian, we are learning how to trust God. The more we trust God, the more our faith will grow. And God is asking us, now this right here, inside here, I, I can't pull it off, and pull, but right in there, there's probably about 200 Mustard seeds. There's 200 in here, about, maybe 150. I pop it open and pull it out, and she get mad at me. It's, it's, it belongs to Catherine. <laughs> I don't want to make the church people mad at me. She's, women especially, I don't want women to be mad at me. Okay? <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. But here, but see, if you look in the Bible, the people who have the faith of a mustard seed. That can begin to, to allow your Christian life to blossom. Here we see salt. We hear, here, <coughs> if you take this, this, you take salt and it's a small, but your faith can grow if you practice it. Let me give you an example. I was hoping to have two of the young men here this morning. They're not here. And, uh, but let me explain something. I do push-ups. I don't want to do it. I'm the pastor. I don't want you, I don't want to be in my suit and tie push-ups. I typically can go up to 50 without stopping. But if I was going to ask Lewis Cleveland to come up here, I'm not going to ask him, so don't worry. But if I was to ask Lewis to come up here and do a push-up, maybe I can ask, go ahead and ask David, you come up, <laughs> to do a push-up. Try to impress his, his new wife one year now, but <laughs> try to impress his wife. Or I can ask Nick to come up and do push-ups. And now I'm sure if I was to ask, oh, we got Matthew, you're young enough. <laughs> come up here for a minute. Matt, come up here, come up here, come up here, come up here, please. <laughs> I didn't think about him. Come on, thank you for helping me this morning. Now, how many, he's going to kill you. He's he saying he's going to kill me after church. Okay. Now, I want you to, to for me, do push-ups as much as you can without stopping, but you have to go down to your nose. About that far. <laughs> Not for a long time. That's okay. That's okay. Well, that, that will help me this morning. So, I want... Do, go, go ahead and do a push-ups until you can't handle it anymore. You, you, you count. 
Now watch this. There's listen more. I'm not trying to be silly. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just, he's going to take care of everything. Oh, don't, don't keep your clothes on, okay? <laughs> okay, now I want to ask him this morning, there's some push-ups until you can't handle it anymore. But I have to go all the way down to about five, five far. Okay? Okay, let's go. So you count for me. Now, while he's push, doing push-ups, start now. Start now. Now, it looked, it appeared to be silly, but go. How many? 27. That's good. Now, I'm, Paul, don't worry about it, but come up here for a minute. Paul, come up here for a minute. Paul, no, I'm not going to ask you to push up, but come here, come here, come here. <laughs> now, I think, I think David can do one. I think you can do push up. Come up here, David, come up here. Please, hurry, hurry. Now, I'm not, now look, look, now watch this. The measurement, watch this, please watch this, please watch this. I'm not just trying to be silly. Uh, you can probably handle it. I'm going to try to do a push-up. Try the best you can over here, okay? <clears throat> I'm not going to ask him. He's 73 years old. Okay, okay, come on. All right. Now watch. He did 27. Okay, all right, now here, now watch, now watch this, now watch this. Now, well, please understand, I'm not trying to be silly. Ten or nine, yeah, I thought it was nine. Um. Okay, you see the kind of strength that he has compared to his strength. Now, he probably would do too. Chester, none. <laughs> Maybe some of you ladies here can beat these two. Well, I don't know. I've seen some strong women. But here's my point. Listen to me. Listen to me. We're speaking about faith. The more push up that he does. Now, how old are you? 32. He's 58. He's 73. Now, I can beat them all. I can. I'm not trying to brag on it, but I can. If I did in front of a crowd, I can do 65 people because people motivate me. But here's my point. My point is this. Because I have done it almost daily, push-ups, my strength has developed, and I can, because I use it, I can benefit more than them. Okay? Now listen to me. Lewis, come up here. Lewis has, and I'm not going to ask him to push-ups. Lewis is not a rich man. He is nearsighted. What do you call that? Your Usher syndrome. syndromes. But this man probably has more faith than most of you. Now he is willing to, I mean, he. He rarely misses church. Almost every, now it's not because of church missing. Now Lewis has had some problems in his life in the past. And he is human like you and me. 
There's nothing special, especially he don't look handsome. He's not handsome. <laughs> okay. But if you talk with him about God and God's word, he can share with you a lot, a lot. You see, he has learned, and by the way, every month is small. He told me, he said, Pastor, I want to give tithe. Pastor, I'm already doing mission. And then his faith, he said, I'm helping with the building. It doesn't matter how much. It doesn't matter how much. It, what the point is, do it. With what God has given you. Not looking for rich people to pay off this building. People who will practice their faith. You practice a little bit, God gives you a spoon to dig that mountain away. I've told you this before, but you see that mountain, you look at that, it's impossible. You asked me five, three years ago, $1.35 million for this for deaf people who have no businesses. We have no business. We don't have wealthy people here. But through the years, a spoon, God has taught me to use a spoon. Now, uh, now, now later, I use a shovel. Then later, I use a bobcat, small one, you know, small. And then later, we get a, a bigger, uh, what I call it, it's not an earth mover, but it's, what? What do you say, Justin? Oh, oh, excavator, excavator, and then later you get an earth mover, the shoes one. But here's what I'm trying to say. This small congregation of people can learn to develop their faith as God is only asking us to have faith of a mustard Mustard seed, one. God is saying, if you and I will trust him with that little bit, he will increase, increase, increase your faith. But the problem is, you and I are satisfied with staying one or two. Now, by the way, he, if I was to ask him, now he walked every day. He walked every day, the building. Now his leg might be stronger than his arms. But listen to me. He practices his faith. And little by little by little, he sees God provide for him. I've seen it in his own life. Now here, look. You might say, I can't do 27. But if you and I just say, can you do 27 push-ups? No, no. I say, will you try to do 27 push-ups? You try? No, no, no. Well, please, try. No, 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 no. He's stubborn. He would never get to 27 if he doesn't practice it. Now watch this. Now he has 10. Now his goal is possible to get to 27. Next week, you oh, tonight, you go home, push-ups. Next Sunday, I think you can do 25. I think you can. I know you. You're Mr. Shine. By the way, he and with this man helped build this platform. And he helped build all of these, these white coating squares around it. I thank God for him. Two, one man invites him, he comes. Because they invite him, he comes. Listen, listen. But you see, 
you look at his strength, or you look at his strength, he says, no, 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 I can't. He says, hmm, maybe. I want to ask you this morning, which are you? You say, no, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, you won't. But if you say, I want to hit 27, I'm going to practice it starting now. He will become strong enough eventually to do. And by the way, in 2007, I got on a treadmill and I could only handle five minutes. That's all. Then one day, three years later, I hit 17 miles on the treadmill. Why? I started with five minutes. <laughs> I can't do that. And that's what I, that was my attitude. I looked back here and I said, I can't do it. But I said, I've got to do it because my, I've got to improve my health. I've got to. So three years later, I'm on a treadmill. And I didn't have to stop, but I went ahead and stopped because I'm getting old. Now, I can't do 17 now because I stopped practicing. Does that make sense? You and me will never hit 27 if we don't practice it. Watch it. Please, I'm going to be sat down briefly. No, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. Well, it's just a minute, just a little bit. I would rather have church members here to look at him and say, I can do it. And he, come over here. And he can say, maybe I can do it. Then to have someone like him say, no, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Does that make class? Okay, thank you, thank you. So very briefly this morning, in Hebrews chapter 11, I'm going to explain five different kinds, and I'll, I'll, I'll expand on that in a little bit. In Hebrews chapter 11, In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For it is the elders that obtain the good report. Now watch this. The elders. What does that mean? Come on, tell me. The elders. The elders that got a good report. Why? They practice faith. My challenge for you, young Christian, doesn't matter if you've been saved for 30 years, if you don't practice faith, your faith is still small. Now, some people ask me, how do you sleep with a debt of $1.35 million? I tell them, very clear, peace of heart. I have peace in my heart when now really most people will say, ah, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Or you could say, he can, he, he can, he can, he can. So I am going to lean, I am going to lean and trust him to help me go through the path that God's told me. Elders here in the Bible, I don't have time to read all the chapter. But you see the people who already practice what I'm talking about. I'm saying to you and I this morning, if we sit and say, I can't, I can't, I can't, and I look at that mountain and I say, I can't, I can't, I can't, guess what? You and me will never conquer that mountain. Now, I, I, I made a decision. I don't want to be a pessimist about that mountain. And guess what? Now, we're not there. We're, we haven't arrived yet. 
But I'm saying to you this morning, faith for a Christian to do it, you will experience what I'm talking about this morning if you do it. You see, God had to teach me many years ago, begin high. That's small. That's my spoon. My spoon. I began to dig. And God graduated me to a shovel. To a shovel I gave to faith promise, helping the missionaries. That's a shovel. That's a shovel. And then God gave me a bobcat that has surrendered my life 100% to God. On March I'm sorry, in October of 1984, I walked down, I heard a black preacher by the name of James Earls. James Earls himself was hard of hearing. I watched that man preach. I watched another man who was by the name of Tim Lee who had no legs. It was, it was blown off the Vietnam War. Both of those legs were blown off Tim Lee will come in. It's a large church. He came down off of that, walked up to the platform, and he stood right here on this, and he preached. <laughs> and then I saw a black preacher by the name of James Earl preaching God's word, starting, starting, starting a lot of black churches for black Americans he started those churches, and I saw his faith. I saw Tim Lee's faith, and I said, if God can use him, if God can use him, can God use me? Now, my faith at that time was a spoon. I'm just trying to say this morning, very quickly, of five different kinds of faith. Number one, number one, the different kind of faith. Number one, let's examine them. Number one, the natural faith. What does that mean? Natural faith, what's in the, the bank account, I trust that. What's in the, ba the bank, I'm going to trust that. That money there, I know I can do it. You know, you are seeing, by the way, it's easy to trust that. If I don't have the money, ah, Justin said this morning, wave your hand. Justin said this morning, some years ago, he was teaching Sunday school. He said some years ago, he didn't know how. I um, mean, he learned, okay, tithe, finish. His mother and father taught him how to tithe. He grew up in a good Christian home. Mom and dad taught him. Then he goes to college in Oklahoma, and he hears the thing called faith promise. He said, okay, I started practicing giving to missionaries. And then one year, he decided he's going to double what he gives. And he said this morning, wow, I, it was money that I did not have. God provided. God gave him what he made a promise. I think it was in January. In January, he made a promise that he'll start from this year to give more to help missionaries go to foreign land preaching the gospel. He made a commitment to God, I will give, and then guess what? One year later, he looked back, wow, God increased my faith. Now hear what I'm saying. Natural faith is nothing. It's nothing. You have whole. You have it, you give it. That is weak. Now, don't, don't, I don't have time to explain the budget. Please follow and understand your budget. Number two, there's, called, there's another faith called intelligent faith. Intelligent faith. Now, what that means, now what's, this, what's this? Let me explain. You make a cake. How many of you like to cook? Okay, you follow a recipe. So, you, am I spell it right? <laughs> Uh, Claudia said, sometimes, well, maybe that's why I don't want to go to the house to eat. I'm afraid of watching it again. <laughs> but but my, my, my point is, you make a cake, you know you put sugar in it. Some people put small of salt in it. 
They put a lot of buried eggs in it. But what if I put like a small cake, like a cake, and I put 10 eggs in it? Now, you look at me, it's a silly. <laughs> what? You don't put, how, many, how many eggs do you put in a cake? Four? Two? I thought it was two or four. Two, I thought it was two. But what if I put 10? That cake will mess up at the end. I put it in the oven, bring it out, messed up. But if I follow the recipe, it's already, someone already experienced that. They know this, uh, this these, these vanilla, this, this flour, this, this sugar, some of the salt, some of these eggs, and whatever they put together, I don't cook. But whatever they put in there, it will successfully come out of the oven, come out of the oven successfully ready to put icing on it. So that's intelligent faith. That is not really practicing trusting someone. Now you already saw the results. Watch this, number three. Got it quickly. Historical faith. You have never met George Washington. Have you ever met George Washington? Huh? Have you ever met, have you ever met Abraham Lincoln? Huh? Huh? <laughs> have you ever met Elvis? Well, some of you might have. Some of you are old enough. But here, listen. Historical faith is we trust what I read in my history books. I know that he did live. He was our first president. And Abraham Lincoln was our 16th president. I know it's historical faith. Number four, number three, number four, number four. Now, there's saving faith. There's saving faith. Watch. Now watch. Saving faith really is small. Now you're putting your trust in God who can save you from eternal hell. But, oh yeah, I don't want to go to hell so I'm going to get saved because I'm afraid. That's little faith, honestly. Saving Roman, little faith would take your soul to heaven. But great faith puts heaven in your soul. Does that make sense? Watch. Saving faith, Romans chapter 10, 10, verse 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And by the way, that verse in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, a deaf man, my right-hand man named Bernardo, Bernardo, Bernardo came to our church at the age of 11, had an afro. I said, what are you hiding in there? He was the age of 11. He came to our church at the age of 11. And he's a wonderful man. We loved him. He became my right-hand man as he became at the age of 11. He got saved when I was preaching about the blood of Christ. He got saved. He came down to the altar. His faith was simple. He accepted Christ. He come and became faithful to church. Never missed. A young boy, old 11, Every Sunday, his parents would put him in the car and bring him to church. Watch. Now, Bernardo, maybe he watched it this morning. Last week, he was in the ICU. One day, he was in the midst, his family was in the midst of a tornado. Tornado. I mean, I, I've lived in Oklahoma City for 23 years, and I have seen tornadoes. You find a toothpick, now that's true, toothpick sticking right through a telephone pole. That's not exaggerating. Amazing, a toothpick so fast, go boop, stick right through 
and on a telephone pole. They hear one day they heard near his house a tornado was coming. I mean, it was a big one. His, his mom and dad were senior citizens. Bernardo, he came along with his family late. Bernardo and his mom and dad, they went into the bedroom and they got into the closet. And Bernardo stood there. His parents didn't know the song from Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. But Bernardo, with his brief voice, sang in the closet, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He was singing that in the closet. With his, his parents didn't know the words. His parents were like... And he was asking God that that, that tornado came to the front yard. It came to the front yard. It's not exaggerated. He came up to the front yard. It skipped the house. Went to the backyard and tore up the yard and went on and destroyed the neighborhood. Now that was the faith that Bernardo had. If I wish I could bring Fernando here, he's a great singer. I wish he was my song leader. Now he sure, you know, watch this now. At the age of 17, he received Christ as his Savior. I'm, I'm sorry. At the age of 11, he received Christ as his Savior. At the age of 19, he graduated. And he came to me, and he came to me. He went to the Bill Wright, uh, he went to a, a deaf conference with me. And we went, and then that year, he surrendered to become a preacher. Two years later, he come up to me. He said, he said, Pastor, you know God called me to preach. I said, yes. And I'm thinking that he will go to another college with the deaf. But he looked at me and said, I don't want to go over there, over there. I want to come here. Our church had a college. And he surrendered to come. And I'm like, we don't have one. Not for the deaf. We have hearing, but not for the deaf. Bernardo was the first deaf person that showed up the first deaf person that enrolled in our college. God allowed him to, now he didn't understand English very well. Like a normal deaf person, uh, we, many of us, don't have our first language in ASL that's not English. So we can understand that. But Fernando struggled, but four years later he graduated. I want to tell you this morning, his faith was small. He practiced it practice it, and practice it, and surrender to become a preacher. Now, I don't have time for that one. We'll, go number, we'll talk about faith. Sa saving faith, if I was given an invitation this morning, and I asked you to receive Christ as your Savior, that's really small faith. That's good faith. That's good faith. That's good faith. It's a wonderful faith. You're putting your trust in God. But the sad thing is, a lot of people don't want to move past that. They don't want to do more than that. They just stay right there. Oh, I've been to trust you. I know. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. So that's all I will do. But God is asking you and me, let's get past that. That is not enough. Ephesians chapter Two, verse eight and nine. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. God gave me the gift, the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. I put my trust in Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sin, and, that, and I entered into heaven. Thank God that Jesus died, his blood on the cross. That allowed me to go to heaven if I receive him as my Savior. Now listen. This victorious faith, the Bible says in John chapter 10, ye shall have life and have it more abundantly. Now some of us was satisfied, receive Jesus, that's enough. I won't trust you anymore. 
But God is asking us, take a step by faith. Take a step by faith. Take a step by faith. You want to do 27 push-ups? Don't listen to him. Listen to him. It's possible to increase to 27. David, I challenge you next week, this week, tomorrow, tonight, go home. Sit down? No, sit down, push up. For one week, he'll probably come back sore. Sore. But listen to me. The point is, practice it. Don't be satisfied. Don't be satisfied with just being saved. Hey! <laughs> I did that. I baptized. That's enough. That's all. And no more. You and me will never experience God's plan for your life if you just satisfied with being saved. That's enough. You ask me, why do we travel? Share the gospel with people all around the world. Why? Why do I want to preach and share Jesus with people? Because salvation is important. That faith is important. That's that's good. But I would hope that you and me get abundant life. Just receiving Jesus is not enough. Too many people are satisfied. Jesus, forgive my sin. That's enough. I go to heaven. But you go on and live like the world. That is not what God was planning for you and me. What God was planning is for you and me to have abundant life. I was, my daughter, I was, I was listening, I was at a conference this week. In a pew, sorry. Pew. My daughter, my, my, my daughter Jocelyn, the one who's going to England, was cleaned up on me. Now, I grew up in the projects in Portsmouth, Ohio. I saw what drugs and alcohol, I saw what the boys, I saw what adultery is living, I saw all that. But when four girls invite me and say, Scott, you want to receive Jesus as your Savior? I said, no. Then the next day, say, yes. That yes, faith, is not enough. But it was the beginning, but it was not enough. That preacher told me, he wrote down my Bible, he says, Scott, now what do you do? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all of these things shall be added unto you. What does he mean? Jesus did not want a life with you like this. No, not this. Jesus is not down here. He's not here. He should be here. My daughter was sitting with me Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, right here. She was coming to me while she was listening to the preaching. She was holding my hand and said, I love you. She would weep with a heart so tender about what God wants for her life. 
I went forward to the altar when I heard some good preaching that week. I went to the altar and I heard some preaching. My heart was tender. And the Lord was telling me, you have to yield some things in your life. Yeah, a pastor. That conference was for all pastors. That church was provided three nights free for pastors to go. And they provided a hotel three nights free. So we went and invited my family to come. We said, we got free meals. We enjoyed the preaching. My heart was stirred. It was stirred. And I heard it. And the preaching said, you not to increase your faith. But I'm listening here holding my daughter's hand. I'm listening with my Bible open. Listening. I have, I always sit this way. That's the way I sit in a church. When I'm listening to preaching, I don't step back and go. Come on, come on, come on. I dare you. Come on. I don't do that. I'm like, come on. I have my Bible, my pen, my pen, my marker. Ooh. I feel like a, a, a baby bird. Give me more worms. <laughs> and I'm hearing some good preaching. Inspires me. My daughter holding my hand. Go, I go, I go. And she comes. We both weep with joy. Chris, Chris Harris, some of you don't know him, but he's one of my boys from back yonder. I taught him to become a preacher. God allowed us to teach him and his wife. His wife my secretary. I've known his wife since they were in diapers. Her, fa- her father killed himself on Thanksgiving morning. My job as assistant pastor of that church in Oklahoma City, we, we had to help that family of seven children. They got the news about their dad Taking um, a gas pipe, gas line from the car, went around, rolled the windows up, put it in there, and he killed himself. That family of seven, mother was there. The children were there, not all of them, three of them. I think three of them were there. The grandchildren were there. If you met Diana today, You won't see, Diane. My father killed himself. My life is awful. If you met Diana, you will see the joy of the Lord in her life. I was sitting with Chris. Chris married her. And Chris, by the way, is Chris Harris. His mom and dad are deaf teachers in Kentucky Deaf Institute. Chris was sitting over here, and when the preaching starts, he and I were just singing like eight different, different, different songs, deaf people. We don't, you know, we're listening to hearing people sing. There's nothing to us. <laughs> but when he got done, the preaching started, Chris said, finish. Stop talking. We were listening. Now listen to me. Listen, listen. I gotta close. Ye are children of God. If you put Christ in your heart, greater is He who lived in you than He that rules the world. I want to tell you that close. The Bible said, Whatsoever is born of God can overcome the world. I challenge you this morning. Let's get done. Let's not, don't trust in your natural faith. Some of you are here this morning, the church, in your natural faith. It's nothing to get up in the morning to come to church. That's nothing. It's nothing to give when you have it in the bank. It's nothing. It's nothing. But I want to say this. My daughter is going to England because she surrendered. Not just she surrendered all of her life to God. My life does not belong to me. My life belongs to God. As I close this morning, you want peace? Fourth one, saving faith is to start. But that's not done. The fifth one, victorious faith, is saying, Lord, 
I want to trust you. I am whatever you tell me to do, I will surrender. Now I ask you this morning. My daughter was not crying from grief. My daughter was crying, and I was crying this week because of joy. Desiring for you to have that joy. As I was sitting there in the depth section, looking at all of that crowd, I looked at Chris, and I said, man, now he's a deaf preacher, and he's 41 years old. And I said, Chris, you and I wish the deaf all like that were here, sitting. <laughs> My happy place is not at the bar. My happy place is in God's house where I can learn a more joy. Let's all stand. You want to have a happy place? Let's get back. Don't be satisfied with that saving face. Become surrendered. Say, yes, Lord. Here am I. My life I hand to you. You take control. You become my master. master. You, I surrender. Whatever the Holy Spirit of God tells me, I surrender it. But when you and I say, Lord, I'll give you all of these. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. But you can't have this, no. That is not surrender. For Lord, I'll give you all of these things. But that is mine. What's in there is mine. Keep your no to yourself. Listen to me. I don't like a lonely house. I don't like an empty nest. I hate it. I can sit in my living room with joy in my heart. Knowing my children will walk in truth. My daughter going to New York, get married in June. And next June, my son up in Ashley, Ohio. My next daughter somewhere go to England. I wish I could claim them. But God gave those three children to me for a while. They were not mine. When all three of those children were born, a preacher came in to our hospital room and prayed with us. And we told Pastor, that child, that child, and that child, three the time is not ours. It's there. This be the parting cry. My heart shall ring. I'm going to tell you something. Still all my prayers shall be. More love, O Christ, to thee. More love to thee. I ask you a question this morning. More love. Victorious faith. Never received Jesus Christ as your Savior back to the beginning. I want to ask you this morning, you say, Preacher, pray for me. I have already received Jesus, my Savior, finished. Now listen, God sees your heart, He knows you. Well, maybe some people here say, I did, uh, but really inside you know you didn't. Surrender and want God to take care of you. If you are here this morning, you say, Pastor, I have never received Jesus as my Savior. I want to thee, you to pray Christ. for me. You say, Pastor, pray More for me love this morning. To thee. I will receive Christ as my Savior. Hear anyway. thou the prayer anyway. I make. 
Okay, I'm going with this thought. If this God has touched my your heart, plea, let's stop fighting God. Hey, stop giving people your problem. To he and we didn't give your problem to you. Love to thee. You made your own problems. Love to we have to take responsibility for it. Blaming people will never give you peace. It's time, it's time to take it off. Sought peace and rest. Hey Lord, now the my problems, I, see, I cast to you. This all my prayer and shall Jesus. be. I have had Someone called me, they said, and I More love to thee. will borrow his water. More <clears throat> love to thee. More Let it roll off my back. Thee. Just roll off. Roll off like a duck. Then shall my latest breath you know, I didn't go to the bathroom. But listen to me. This be the Let it go. My heart shall Let it go. Still all my prayers let shall go. be. Then let go. More love God touched your heart. Come around and talk to you also. Say, Lord, help me. More, More love, love my life. to come thee. On. Listen, the heart of this pastor, my heart is for you.